hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Bureau. And I'm Marilyn Bureau. And uh, we're here uh, to take you on a trip from uh, Bari uh, in Italy by ferry to the Mykonos Islands and the Peloponnesian Peninsula in a city called Nafilo. And we're going to be talking about the Greeks and the Greek food and the Greek tradition uh, that is so wonderful. And we both had the opportunity to go there uh, and uh, we're excited about doing this. Uh, we're going to have some uh, recipes, uh, a pork slovaki, which I, I've i sort of changed a bit. Well, he's made it a little easier so that it doesn't it's have to best. be skewered and all of that. So you still get the flavor, but not I, all I, the work. I think it's the best I've ever had. Oh, well, you would think that anyway. <laughs> so. And we're going to have uh, Cleftico. You all know what cleftico is, don't you? <laughs> no, you don't. Know. Well, it's, it's chicken baked in foil. And it was, Jim did try that, and that was very good. Yeah. It's very flavorful. And we're also going to have Rizugalalo. I just pronounced that wrong. I don't know what. It's <laughs> rice pudding. <laughs> <laughs> it's far from right, but that's okay. You'll and, know what it is. <laughs> and we're also going to have, I think, the best soup imaginable which is a chicken lemon orzo soup that is light and creamy without any cream and it's really a great recipe. So we're going to have all them today and um, we got you know Greek food Marilyn is very simple well, food. Well it is very simple. They, very healthy. They basically do a lot of grilling and marinating. They use lemon all the time because it, they you know when we talk about um, uh, farm to table here. The Greeks have been doing this for years and years yeah. and years. Yeah, they actually eons. they are actually use what is indigenous to their area. If they live near the sea, then there's a lot of fish and whatever. They're well, they Marilyn, they do the best of any cuisine with fish. They, they do. They I, simple recipes and stuff but it is fantastic but it is but they that is what their cuisine is right. and it, it's absolutely wonderful and they eat a lot of lamb we don't eat a lot of lamb here in the united states you and i like lamb but well again you're talking very mountainous so you have goats right you have lamb and, and, and beef is beef isn't uh, you know the farms aren't able to raise beef and they right. use yogurt and they use a lot of goat cheese you know, the feta is really goat cheese. So basically, they're using the smaller animals because yeah. that's what they can raise in their country. And they ha they they produce uh, honeys from Greece are, are very good. Uh, they use a lot of dried oregano. And they, they make this dough called phyllo, which is paper, paper thin. Right. How they make it, I don't know, but it's a great thing. Well, that you They're, can buy frozen, though. That's yeah, easy. Yeah, thank God, I sure <laughs> No, I never want to try <clears throat> to make it myself. And the olive oils are, are are very, very good. I like it better than the Italian oils, and I, that's something for me to admit. And then they have yogurt, and that was Greek yogurt. Now, that's the whole rage here in the United States, but it originally started in Greece, and you would get this absolutely incredible yogurt there. Yeah. Um, and now it's part of most companies here in the United States. And then besides that, this country is beautiful. It is. Rolling hills, water all over the place, the Aegean Sea, the blueness of it. It's a great place. If you, if you have the opportunity to, uh, to go there, go there. It's a wonderful, wonderful city, a wonderful country. Uh, their problems uh, economically have seemed to have subsided. The people are wonderful, and you should take advantage of it. So, Marilyn, may, may, let's start with the best ever, unequivocally. What? <laughs> Slovaki. Slovaki. By All Jim right. Barrow. By da, Jim da, Barrow. Da, 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 okay, da. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here, here in the United States, in, in New York, uh, we have Speedy. And, uh, and it usually is started in Binghamton, and you put it on a, on a skewer, and you grill it, and you marinate, and you, and you, put it, uh, and you grill it. <clears throat> and uh, and if you go to the state fair, they have it too. The problem with it is that the meat dries out, uh, and it's, it's it doesn't it it's tough. So I figured out a way of keeping it nice and moist. He's come up with this moist. really interesting way, right? 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pork tenderloin to make this. And pork tenderloin is, I think, the best buy on the market. I probably told you this before. Uh, you go to Wegmans and you can buy pork tenderloin for under $3 a pound. And you're going to get six pork tenderloins. I take them. I, I remove that the white, that skin. It sort of looks, yes. It's it looks so like I, It looks like a membrane, really. Right. And then you take some of that off. And then freeze them. I use what I want when I, when I buy them and then freeze them. And it, they, they, they're universal what you can do with them. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this pork tenderloin and we're going to marinate. We're going to move that, that membrane. And we're going to marinate it for about two hours. Uh, in a combination of lemon juice, olive oil, garlic powder, and oregano. That's usually the combination that they use in Greece. But you, you're already cutting them. You're already cutting them in half or in quarters yes. to put them. Yes. You're gonna you're gonna take the whole pork tenderloin, and take a nice sharp knife and cut it horizontally all the way across. So you, the one piece is now going to be two pieces, and uh, you're going to let that marinate for two hours. Then you're going to get a pan, nice and hot. You don't even have to put any oil in because the marinade is in there. Put it's it on there, there yeah. and, and cook it two minutes per side. That's it. And you take it out and you put it into a pita, you get a pita, pita bread, cut yeah. in half. Then uh, you're going to put a sauce over it, which is a yogurt sauce, a uh, yogurt, yogurt and feta, <coughs> feta sauce, uh, which is a combination of Greek yogurt uh, or I tell you, actually, Bulgarian yogurt is better than Greek no, yogurt. No, Bulgarian feta. Is F Bulgarian feta, excuse yogurt me. Yogurt is Greek That's yogurt. That's right, Greek yes. yogurt. That's right. <laughs> I get confused. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> I have to keep them on track. If it wasn't for her, I'd be gone a long time ago. <clears throat> uh, mix it with some olive, olive oil. I don't know if I can keep going here. <laughs> Oregano and salt and pepper. And put that over the top of the, uh, the this pork tenderloin. If the thing is too big, cut it in half to fit it into the into the pita. Right. And then mix together some uh, uh, tomatoes, uh, plum tomatoes, uh, cubed, about a quarter cup of that, some uh, diced cucumber, and some red onion, and salt and pepper, and uh, slice up some iceberg lettuce. Yeah, I know you don't thinly. like Very thinly. Very yeah, thinly. Yes. Put that on top. And you're going to bite into this. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Going to, it, it's going to be tender. Uh, it, it's, going, it's going to be the best Slovakia you ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm really wound up today, aren't I? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so you want a, you want a, if you want a good Slovakia, it's a pork Slovakia. It's that very you're good. And it's easier than love. putting it on skewers. So it, is. it, it simplifies it, is. it a little bit. So... We're, we're going to go to Mykonos first, the island of Mykonos. And uh, it's, a, it's a small island, have uh, stucco, whitewashed uh, homes. Oh, it, when you think of their beautiful white buildings and the blue roofs and all of that, which is very Greek if you have seen any documentaries on, on Greece or travel logs. And that's what Mykonos is like. And and right along the water, they have these windmills that people come and sit at uh, when the, and watch the sun go down. Or better yet, they go into the bars along the water and drink uh, ouzo, uh, which turns white when you put uh, uh, ice in it, and watch the sun go down. And Look has, out doesn't at doesn't it have a bit of a licorice flavor? It has a licorice flavor to it, right. yeah. And they have these wonderful little cobblestone streets and uh, these white beaches have have nude beaches there. A lot of nude beaches. Well, that's sort of typical all over Europe, though. And, that's in France and and, and, and if you've Greece. never you, if you ever get a chance <laughs> to go to a nude beach and watch him play volleyball, everything's <laughs> flopping up and down. Well, I don't know if that's so good, but that's all it's right. It's funny. <laughs> Put it on your bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's it's a great place. So uh, I think it's time for rice pudding all right now if if you uh go to a a, a, a diner most of them are run many of the diners here in the united states it's a tendency for people of greece extraction or ethnicity to run diners they seem to like that and so. they make good rice pudding 
and I love rice pudding. What is not Maryland's favorite, but I thoroughly enjoy it. And I've got a recipe for you for Greek rice pudding. It's going to be nice and creamy, uh, and you can do many things with it. But uh, you're going to heat up about four and a half cups of milk, and you're going to simmer that for about five minutes. Then you're going to add about a third of a cup of either long grain white rice, or I prefer arborio rice, the Italian short grain white rice. And you're going to put a uh, cinnamon stick in there, uh, the lemon zest, which is the skin of, of the lemon, and half uh, of uh, uh, put that in there and let that cook for simmer for about 15 minutes. While you're doing that, in another saucepan, mix up two tablespoons of cornstarch, or two teaspoons of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of cold milk, and let that heat very slowly and until that it thickens. thickens. Yes. And we. we in the recipe at the end of this, I forgot the cornstarch. Yeah. So it add the cornstarch. Right. So, <laughs> so then. Uh, Remove that, that milk uh, that is thickened up uh, and take it off of the, the burner. Beat in two egg yolks very, very slowly and at a very low temperature. And, uh, and then add to that some vanilla extract, some sugar, and simmer that. Again, very slowly and stirring it for about five, five minutes. Take out the cinnamon stick, put it in a bowl, and you can refrigerate it and eat it the following day. I actually like my my uh, rice pudding warm. And in fact, I'll I, I made some and I uh, I put it in the refrigerator because you got to keep it in the refrigerator. But when I wanted it, I just took it out and I put it in the microwave for 30 seconds to get that that chilledness out of it. You can also add to that if you like. Uh, you could add. Uh, uh, nuts, uh, pistachios, or raisins, or raisins, or, raisins or, whatever. or cranberries, any dried type of fruit. The other thing is that uh, in many of the desserts of, of, of uh, Greece, it is the cinnamon flavor in the sugar and usually some creamy. Uh, there's one that uh, our son Mike loves to make, which is Galata Barega, and it has sort of this creamy. Uh, but it's also put into phyllo dough. It's a, an incredible dessert. It, it's a pain to make. My son does as good a job as I've ever seen uh, eaten of of this dish. Oh. Uh, I, you, you're not going to make it. Go to a if you can. But have, if you ever find it on the menu, try it. Try You'll it. Really, Galata really Barreca. like it. Uh, I had the. For, uh, I was fortunate enough. My son was in the travel business, and he asked. He said to me, he says, Dad, he says. I'm going to go to Greece, uh, and he invited me to come with him and stay in an apartment in uh, in in Mykonos, and so I I says fine, let's do it. And so we went and and uh, uh, I went to bed. Uh, and we had it right. It was in right downtown area of of Mykonos, and all of a sudden the whole place is jumpy, the whole, and I'm hearing boom 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 well, boom. Well, there's a, an extreme nightlife. I mean, they e realize that in Greece. You eat dinner at 10 o'clock and then you go to the bars. I mean, this is traditionally all over it. It's very, you know, they go to the beaches during the day. They take their siestas. So there's a, there is much of a nightlife uh, culture in Greece. Period. Yeah, so. but you know who's causing the problems? It isn't the Greeks. <laughs> it's the damn Italians. It's the Italians coming they come over, over from Bari, on the ferry uh, from Bari to Mykonos, yeah. and they are dressed to the nines. And they, uh, it's La Dolce Vita. And so I'm in there bouncing up and down. Mm -hmm. and I know I can't sleep. So I get up, I, found a, I find a cafe on the main route where all these people are jostling around. I mean, they're and dressed the, yeah. in Verace and, and they have their dogs dressed and their cats dressed. Well, you're in an outdoor cafe is where you're watching the people. Yeah, and I, I sat there all night long. Right drinking this Greek coffee. Now, when you have Greek coffee, you're not going to go to sleep. It's going to keep you awake Well, it's anyways. very strong. And and the yogurt and uh, with drizzling of honey. Their honey is great. But I tell you, the honey that we have here, right here in Seneca Falls, is wonderful. It compares uh, with the Greek honey. Uh, the, other, uh, the other coffee that they drink a lot of is called frappe, which is actually made, what you believe, is made out of instant Nescafe. Yes, it but is. I don't know what they do to it there. 
they foam it and they do all kinds of things and you would never know that you were drinking instant Nescafe. I drink it at home now. And they, they in Greece they take it and they put a little uh, sugar and cream in it. I don't like sugar and cream in my uh, right. And then I take my blender and I but I, and they I foam it up foam and it it's up. really something. And uh, it, it's a great dish, uh, a great stuff to eat. So uh, you, it's an acquired taste. Would you say, Marilyn? I think so. All right. So, but when you're there, it's very good. They also, as I'm sitting there, a lot of these people are, are next to me. They're drinking this clear liquid, and uh, and I said, "What are you drinking?" I thought it was. Or, or, orzo, uzo. Yeah, uzo, uzo is what you thought and, it was. Uh, he said, no, this is not uzo. This is called raki. Uh, and, I, and he says, here, taste it. It tastes like turpentine. Yeah, it's like it's made, I think, from the pine tar, to be honest with you, something like it, that. This is this Greek moonshine. Well, I, yes, I from maybe a pine tree. Yeah, possibly. Terrible stuff. Stay I don't away know. from don't, it. Don't go there. That's not our favorite. So while I'm there, I, I meet this, this young man who is, uh, he's from the United States, a graduate of Harvard, and worked on Wall Street and decided he didn't, he stopped the world I want to get off. And he came to Mykonos and he bought a gay bar, okay? And he invited me to come uh, to the gay bar. And it's, it starts at midnight. So. Well, if you eat at 10 o'clock at night, then you go to the bars sure. at midnight, yes. So I go to the spot, and here he is, uh, and he's got he's just got this little loincloth on, and he's beckoning people to come in, and he had a string attached to the loincloth, and he would pull on the string, and the top of his loincloth would come up. That So So that was attracting uh, the uh, clientele. The clients. So I can tell you what that is, <laughs> what kind of a bar that is. Okay. <laughs> so going, going forward here, let's, <laughs> let's travel on. <laughs> let's go... So many years later, we went on a trip with some friends to Nafoli, Nafolio, which is in the Peloponnesian. If, if you go to uh, Athens and hang a left, you go on to the peninsula, and then right down on, yeah. uh, and, and uh, once you go on down there, there's this little beautiful little town that reminds you it has a Venetian feel to it. Well, it was, it was conquered by the Venetians. So basically, it looks like they're square, basically, you would th and it's near the water, and you would really think that you were in Venice. S seriously, the little cafes and everything. It's very, you, you can see the culture. And you're talking back in the 1400s when it was, uh, it was conquered by the Venetians. They have this piazza that is all, uh, covered with, uh, with granite or some kind of marble or something. Again, going back to the Italian heritage, sure. Yep, and uh, we would go there every night and we would have this frappy that Marilyn is talking about. And these little fried donuts, which right. they soak in honey, they're very, very sweet, and that's what we would have every night before we went to bed. Uh, and then along the water, uh, they have all these... They have several different restaurants, again... Uh, and tell them about the fish, Jim. How you get to, you can order your you can order a whole fish. You go in, say at noon, or you make your reservation and say, "I would like a whole fish for our table that particular night." And and so then uh, you you go in, and he says they bring you back into the kitchen, and they have live fish in there. Yeah, they have like aquarium kinds of right. places where they hold the fish. And you pick out the fish you want. And because Jim is male and the head of the household, he got to go back in the kitchen and pick the fish. <laughs> so, but that's no the women allowed back <laughs> This is the tradition. Now, I have to say that one day, I think Susie and I went in and picked the fish yeah. uh, at one of the reservations we made. But And they mm -hmm. make slits in it. They gut it and make slits in it. And they make a uh, little olive oil and lemon and garlic and oregano, and they just simply grill it uh, uh, on charcoal, and it is to die for. Of course, it's, it's again, it's fresh fish. So how better can you get than something that was probably caught that day? Yes. Okay, and put into the holding tanks for that evening meal. The other thing that we had when we were in Nafio is uh, a, a 
hero or gyro, but nothing like you've had here in the United States. In the United States, they have it in, and it's prepackaged, mm. it's ground up stuff. I don't like it. Over there, they take pork steak and they marinate them and they put it on a skewer and they keep piling them up and piling them up. It looks like a overgrown beehive. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a charcoal burner that uh, on the outside and it rotates. And when you go in to order a, order this, uh, they slice very thinly. They got a little pan. They slice very thinly into the pan, and then they make your make your gyro with it. Really, really, really good or stuff. Gyro is how they would say it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a great spot. We went there. We we do a business with a company called Idle on Tours, and we go there. We spent two weeks there. We we get uh, they give us give us a car, or we pay for a car for the two weeks. We have an apartment. And we have someone there to tell us where to go and what you meet to do. With, you meet with your uh, tour director like the first day or something, and they give you an overview of what's available, what, what kind of tourist attractions there are, and certain dinners that mm -hmm. you would have together. And then you're pretty much on your own, and it's really, really interesting. Uh, I think it's a nice way because it isn't a tour tour to say right. that you get on a tour bus, but you do have the ability to have somebody, and particularly if you're going to Greece and you have the language barrier, Christos was our guide, and Christos was absolutely incredible. And tell them, tell them of some of the other wonderful sites that we visited when we well, were Well, when we were there, first of all, right there in Naflio is a Palamede fortress, and it has 99 steps going up to it. And not that I walked the steps, but... Uh, Susie did. Uh, Susie did, but that was really nice. And then there, uh, on the Peloponnesian Peninsula, there are two major cities um, that you have Delphi, which was considered the home of the gods, and we went and visited that, and that was incredible. And then, of course, you have Olympia, which is the first site of the first Olympic Games. Another time we decided that we would take a really different trip and we decided to go uh, with Christo's help and guidance. We went to Monmanvasia, which is a southernmost tip and you have to get there over a bridge. And it basically has, what would you say, about a hundred churches? At um, least a hundred it, churches. It's a rock. I mean, it's, it's, it's built on a rock. There's not a, a um, blade of grass imaginable on this place. And it has all these things at these places. And one of these churches had an icon that was stolen. And, a, and it's a sacred icon. And they establish a reward of five million dollars for this icon. And someone brought it back and they paid five million dollars. These, these to people, have and it's a small community, a wonderful community, beautiful restaurants. It was really interesting. We actually stayed in almost like a cave-like we yeah, had a room, and a, I mean, everything is built into the rock. So it was wonderful, and wonderful restaurants. But the, this community paid to get their icon back. So the, the churches were beautiful, the art was beautiful, the food was wonderful. Yes, so if it, the, the trip was well worth it. And on the way back, we decided to take a shortcut. We're going to go up over the mountain. <laughs> right, well, yes. <laughs> and we're going up and up, and the roads are getting smaller and smaller. And all of all of the wonderful mm. Greek people are there, and they're waving at us. Oh, aren't that friendly? They're waving at us. Like, wave, wave, wave. Well, we finally one understood what they were doing. They were trying to tell us, go back, go back. You don't want to go we this were way. On, we were on gravel road. I don't know where we were. I, I, it was... That was one of the problems, not really knowing the language, but it was fun because not only is are the road signs in in Greek, which we don't in the Greek letter, but there's an an ancient Greek lettering too. So in the smaller towns, you may have a different. If your guidebook said that this was what the roadside said, it might be in the old Greek, and that wasn't in your guidebook. So it was, it was a little interesting. <laughs> but so. we got to a point, I didn't think we were going to get it. We got to a point where there was on the edge of a cliff, couldn't turn around, and I says, we're in deep trouble. Uh -huh. I, so we, I said, well, I'm just going to go up another 100 yards, and thank God we did because we came to, to a, a real road. road, road. So. So, but, uh, but those are the wonderful experiences that you remember. Yeah, it's a, and remember fondly. 
Uh, we're running out of time, but I, I do want to mention, I think, one of the best soups, uh, which is a chicken uh, 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 lemon soup with orzo. Uh, yeah, orzo is a little tiny teardrop type of pasta. Yes, it is. And Wegmans has got, they've got two different kinds. Wegmans, that, under their own brand, under their own label, one which is a mixture of, of it, it isn't 100% semolina, and the other one is called Italian uh, semolina uh, stuff. Get that one, and it's really good. And it's it's really very, very easy to make. There's no cream in it, although it does taste creamy. It has that lightness of, of lemon in it, and uh, I, 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 it's one of my favorite, favorite dishes. And it's so easy to make. All you have to do is uh, heat up four, four cups of chicken stock, add uh, your orzo pasta that hasn't been cooked, put it in there, simmer it for 15 minutes, take a chicken breast and slices as, as thin as you can, put that in there, simmer that for three minutes. Then in a little bowl, whisk up a couple of eggs, some lemon juice and lemon zest, add a cup of, uh, of the stock and add it to that. Don't, don't throw it in right away. So you want to get it adjusted. Then very slowly add this back into your stock. And when it thickens, uh, put a little salt and pepper in it. Uh, garnish it with uh, some parsley or some mint. And you're done. And, and, you ha and it, it, this is a, di is a soup that you can serve in the summer. You can actually even serve this cold. It's it's wonderful, and it's the egg that that really thickens it up, and you really think you're eating a cream soup, which you really are not. So, so uh, you should try that. All of, all of the recipes that we've given uh, are available uh, at the site. Fingerlakes1.com uh, on our, the end of our show. So. Right. So you take a look at them. I think you'll enjoy Greek food. It's uh, simple, healthy, and good. Next time we meet, we are going to go mafia. <laughs> yes, we, a friend gave Jim a book that is a cookbook by the Mafia, and we're going to talk about these kinds of cookbooks that people people make that are some of their family. So uh, uh, Gabe Lombardo and Bev gave Jim this cookbook, so now he's trying all these Mafia recipes, the Mafia cookbook. Gabe thinks it's an absolutely wonderful cookbook, but it has some good... Uh, so we're going to talk a lot about that and, and feature some interesting recipes And the that. Uh, the chef, the guy that does the cooking, actually because it was a member of, of, of the mafia. Then he turned, uh, turned squealer and all kinds of things happened. But uh, the recipes are old-time Italian foods. They really are. Uh, they're with a little twist, a little difference mm -hmm. to them. They surely aren't healthy, but they're <laughs> awfully, awfully good. And we uh, we got with association with a cookbook that he wrote. I've tried these uh, recipes. A couple of them anyway. I will try some more. So we're going mafia, and I I have a soft spot in my heart if I can say it that way. The mafia, in the business I was in, I in sometimes had to deal with with people who were associated. And I, so we're gonna and we're gonna tell some stories about they're they're funny and they're sad combination. It's gonna be an interesting show. Uh, with some uh, some interesting recipes, so we hope that you will uh, join, join us, us in a couple of weeks. And uh, now that the weather is good, plant your garden, get the tomatoes ready to make be sure planted. you have those wonderful tomatoes. Yeah, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll see you in uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, ciao, ciao.